Welcome viewers, my name is Sion Wilfred, the Regional Consultant of the Kenya Centers of Academicians and the Diverse Oriented Research. Uh, Kedol, we invest, we invest in the brains. Uh, today we are hosting members of Kedol, uh, Kedol moderators and mentees, learners who are in a traditional program to university. We also have one of our uh, mentee students in high school. And we are discussing a very interesting topic. Our learners who are at home preparing to join, I mean, to open schools next week, and even those who are preparing themselves to join for one, going to high school for the first time. This will be a very important topic to you because you are going to learn a lot. This topic will also be important to parents who are watching us right now because uh, they, have, uh, they have a lot to learn. And we are talking about questions that are asked by most students. Questions that are asked by most of the students. We've been uh, visiting learners in various schools and we, we realize that there are many questions in the minds of our, of our students uh, concerning academics, career mentorship, and also talent. Today, we have our panelists and it will be very interesting to listen to them, their views. We will have some of them each one of them asking a question and each one of them answering a particular question. Now we begin, and before we officially begin, I would want them to ask and I mean, introduce themselves. And I'll begin from my far right. Uh, we have Stacey this other side. So, can we have uh, introductions coming this direction? Hello, viewers. My name is Stacey. I'm a mentee <coughs> participating in a transitional program. Welcome. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Gerard Rotich. Uh, I'm a mentor at Kador and also doing a transitional program. Hello, viewers. My name is Janet Chepon. I'm a moderator at Kador and also a counseling psychologist by profession. Yes, welcome, viewers. I'm Mark Lelay, a member of Kador as a moderator. Hello to you guys. My name is Masidi Mayu, a member of the Kadar and in a transitional program to university. Hello to you. My name is David Scottich. Um, I'm a clinical nutritionist by profession and also a moderator. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, as I said earlier, this will be very interesting. And uh, viewers who are watching us live in Steve's TV, and also those who are watching us live in YouTube, welcome. The, I remind you the topic of the day. This is the, the questions. These are the questions that are mostly asked by students. Every time we visit schools, we have many students asking us questions. We want to handle at least 10 of them. The top 10 questions that are asked by students every time we visit them. As I promised earlier, we will have um, some of us asking questions and others answering the questions. Something very important that I've said before, that uh, very soon most of the students who ask most of the questions will outsmart most of the students who answer most of the questions most of the time. This is why we are handling questions. We believe in Socratic method where questions are very important. When you ask something, you get something new. Let's begin, and I will begin with my first moderator who will ask a question. And this first moderator is Janet. Janet will be asking the first question, and that first question will be answered by Stacy. So, Janet, welcome. The question is asking, what can I do to improve the results? Okay. Thank you very much. Once again, the question, reacting to the question, why the student's performance is not proportional, the hard work of the student is not proportional to their results. The reason might be because students in at school, students have this mental attitude. You know, you, you yourself, you know that you have to perform well in order to reach your career or to meet your target. But due to some few challenges, like maybe the moral support from the, from the 
teachers, the parents, and also the fellow students. Like you hear what your fellow student says about the performance of a certain subject, for example, chemistry. If you put that to your mind, definitely you will not perform very well. But you have, we have this thing. You know that without academic excellence, there is nowhere you will go. The, the doors of the world these days, they are open to successful people. So definitely you know you, you need to work smart in your studies so that you can succeed. So inculcating what other people say about the performance of a certain subject, definitely you will not perform well. So maybe the essence of you not performing very well in your studies is because you, you do a cut and you do not perform well in that cut. So instead of you coming back, you, the teachers normally advise you that you go back, check on your results, follow up on the, some of the subjects which made you not to perform well. So instead of following that, you just peruse it and say, oh, it has gone, let me wait for the next one. When the next examination comes, the next examination maybe you're supposed to take your results home. So instead of going back to what you had how to check on how you had performed in the previous examination for you to know what, which are the areas you're supposed to perfect on, you just assume. At the end of the day, you'll end up repeating the same mistake. Hence, you'll not perform well and therefore you'll be frustrating yourself. So, academic failure to me, it starts with the individual. Academic excellence also starts with the individual. So it is upon the individual to decide whether to succeed or fail. So the reason why they keep on asking this question, why do I fail? What do I do for me to succeed? We have this thing, when mentors come to schools to mentor us, we have that psych. After mentorship, you are very positive that I'm going to make my personal timetable, follow up on it, must you are a witness of this. Yeah. Also, scholar, you can agree with me that after mentorship, you have the psych. But two days after the mentorship is done, you are back to your normal routine. So you have to change your normal ways of doing things. Everybody else does the same thing. You don't want to be like everybody else. So you have to change, have a new strategy of doing your own things for you to succeed. Thank you. Wow, that's great. That's fantastic. I believe that uh, learners who are at home listening to us before you go back to school, this is very important for you. Uh, that, is, that is great and that is amazing. Unless we have uh, uh, something additional the same. Uh, just something to add is that uh, we should also remember the Pareto rule, the 20-80%. Now that this is a student asking himself or herself, why their performance and results not proportional to their hard work? Then it means they are doing 80%, getting 20%. And uh, surely when you are doing 80% and getting 20%, you are not happy, you will not be a happy student because you will be doing too much, a lot, and achieving very little. That is a methodology problem, and that is why Kedor is there to really answer some of those questions and help you to do 20% and achieve 80%. That's great, and we move now to the next part of our program, that is the next question. And uh, this first question, second question, will be asked by one of our students who is a candidate in the year 2021 at Simore Girls High School and that is scholar, and the question will be answered by Davis. The second question, the second question mostly, mostly asked by students is what can I do to improve my performance or to change my performance? Thank you. Thank you for that question. Now let's listen to Davis. Thank you very much, dear listeners and viewers. I want to be asked this question that uh, most students and uh, I believe people also ask themselves that uh, what they can do to improve their, their, their results. One, I know, I know most when we are growing or when we are students, we are things which um, in one way or the other affect our success. We are sleep, 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 so we, if our learners would regulate their time so that they are that time to be, that's a way of improving their success. And again, we have what you call exercise. If our learners would have time to, 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 to practice what they, they have planned, 
what they got from their teachers. I believe this is a way of improving their success and also their results at the end of the semester or at the end of the term. Again, um, I know most of us ask themselves questions. Why, why in class we are those who do better than others? No, this is not because those, those, those learners are, are men in a different way, but this is because what they do while they are free. If we make use of our free time, or the time that we have enough to do, to practice on what we plan in class, this is a way of, of, of building a success culture. Most of the time, we, we someone saying that um, I don't mind Sir Devil's workshop. When we are doing uh, nothing, or should I say when we are idle, as learners or as students, if we could use this opportunity or this time to, to practice what you plan in class, to make it into practice, if, 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 if it means going back the whole day and studying what you have been given in, in form of assignment, in form of, in form of notes and all that. So I believe the results will not be the way they work. And again, we, we, we have um, a scador to say that uh, life is about mentorship. If one has a mentor, and of course the results of the mentor would be far much uh, better than the mentee. So if, 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 a, if a people have a mentor, whom at the end of the day we follow that I want to be like so and so. This is how we improve our, our results because uh, when we are free, we get to our mentors and ask them, what did you do to, to perfect in this area that probably at that time we find it hard for you. I also believe on, on, on what one, one of us has said about uh, the, the Pareto principle, it's, it's an Italian uh, principle that, that uh, brings a very big change in, in our results, that uh, doing 20 and, 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 and receiving the 80 percent. So this, all this is, is, is inclined to our, our commitment and, 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 this, and the work that we are doing for our, ourselves. So I would say um, in a nation that um, if at all our learners would incline their, 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 most of their time to what they are doing in school, because what you do at your free time, what you do mostly is what occupies most of your brain. So um, I would say uh, for our learners, those who are in school now, those who are preparing to join, and those who are probably who are planning to be students, that uh, it's of importance to, to make use of every opportunity. I think that one is highlighted in one of the verses in the Bible, that also we, we make use of every opportunity. So I would tell the learners that uh, for our results to change, we also ought to make use of every opportunity that you are given, either in school or back at home. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yes, that's great. Um, that is wonderful. I believe that learners can now um, take their position to really improve by doing what Davis has told us. And in the third question, we will be having uh, Janet asking this question about exposure programs. Uh, and uh, we will have uh, we will have, who is it, Davis, answering that question? Uh, yes, can we have that question now so that we get the answer? Yeah, um, once again, uh, the question is about uh, why should we study in Kenya and uh, why should we study in abroad? So the students are asking this question. They want to know the difference of uh, studying in Kenya maybe after the Form 4 and uh, the difference uh, of uh, studying abroad after Form 4, like directly after they are done with their Form 4, is it advantageous for them to study in the local universities or is it better for them to further their studies directly in abroad? Thank you very much, um, uh, colleague, that has raised a very good question on, on whether to study in Kenya or study abroad. Both are very good and correct, depending on, on, on how we get it. For example, while we, we are growing, there are things that we don't know until we ask for them. There are things you never know that uh, when, you, when you combine, uh, when, okay, when you, you can't close on electricity and maybe 
uh, uh, all some of the wires into you get a show until you experience it or until you 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 you, you go through the the, 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 the the experience yourself. So what I would say is that uh, for our learners who are still in school and asking themselves a lot of questions on whether to study in China or abroad, I want to say that all of them are very correct. But now listen to me. If studying in Kenya, for example, uh, is, is, is making you comfortable, for example, there are, there are places in Kenya that uh, are also offered elsewhere, overseas. So there are no difference, but now there, there, are, there are countries or states whereby uh, gives us our, our learning a very good, our learners a very good um, environment to study. For example, when you let us take ourselves back to those times of Leonardo de Marico that we There are these countries that are far much ahead of our country. For example, China, China, and Australia, and those other countries, Italy, and so on. So if our learners can get themselves opportunities in such countries, in a way we say that they are going to, to get themselves greener pastures, what people say, because those are the countries that are far much ahead of our country, in terms of security, in terms of, of, of learning materials, in terms of, in terms of even, even the political stability of the country that will give them a very good uh, time to study. So I would say that uh, for our learners who are, who, are, who are thinking of going and studying probably outside Kenya, that uh, they consider a lot of things. For example, what I know, before you establish a, a supermarket, there are things to consider. For example, the, the situation of the the, the, the supermarket. You cannot establish it next, next to a river, right? We, we make it uh, in a place where people will find it accessible. Again, uh, when you are choosing for places to go and study, there are things that we should, put, uh, we should put them into consideration. For example, security of the country. How safe are you as a land when you go there and stay for 10 years? For example, there are countries whereby we, we've been experiencing more since since, since time in the morning, since when we are growing, we, we hear about wars and conflicts and, and all that and such kind of So I would not advise any learner to go and study there. But okay, in a conclusion of the matter, we we'll say that uh, let our learners, together with our mentors and teachers, take, take this into consideration that when you are studying in Kenya, there are also places in Kenya which are safe for studies. There are other places that you will not wish your child. I'm not saying Kenya is not good. But um, in terms of, 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 of uh, financial, whatever, of course, uh, studying in a city and studying in a, uh, studying in a, in a, in a university, which is an outskirt, okay, situated in an outskirt in a company in a, in a city, uh, in terms of cash and spend, expenditure and all that, we'd say it's better for one to study, depending on what your parent can, can, can support you with. But if it's a scholarship, then there's no, um, condemnation for that. So I would say that um, uh, before we make a choice, because someone say the decisions we make today will make us. So before you decide to go to such a country or if you are thinking of the same, it's good to ask from reliable sources. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Maybe we have uh, Mark also added yes. something. Yes, on top of that, Mr. Chair, <coughs> I wanted to. Uh, that David is also, also touch on this issue whereby of late most of our students also are enticed or uh, being pulled by the economical powers of those nations like USA, yes. Australia, where they can be a student as well, as well as working somewhere after studies. So don't you think also that is an attractive feature of such a, uh, such a move of late? Yeah, and most of our students. Yeah, I think that is actually very important, Walim. And uh, I'm also meant to understand that when, when those British came to our country, they used sweets for that, for that time to entice Kenyans before, before they for grabbing their, their land and all that. So again, uh, I'm sure there are good things that those countries are promising us that you are going to work there, you are going to be given vehicles, houses, and all that. So this no, there is nothing that comes in a simple plan. And someone said, when, when the deal is so good, you think twice. Yeah, so I will tell our learners that it's 
good to console and trust from our vendors. Thank you. Looks like Stacy wishes to say something. Just to add up on what you're saying, uh, despite the fact that Alana is going to study abroad, we normally say East West home is best. So to our motherland Kenya, it's not like we are forgetting you. It's not like we are forgetting Kenya. So we are going there to study so that after studying, we work. And what we work and invest in, we bring back to Kenya. So what we are advising to our learners is going abroad does not mean you go abroad, start your own family, and live there like for good, forgetting your motherland, Kenya. You re go there and remember where you've come from. You, you know, Kenya, Kenya wants you. Kenya wants you to bring that knowledge from abroad to bring it back to Kenya. And people normally say that Kenya these days there is no employment. No. Employment starts with you yourself. We talk of self-employment. Work if you're studying in Kenya, work smart, study, finish your studies. For example, uh, like what is happening now, journalism. Journalism is a big field. Many people are in the field of journalism. So you cannot expect that all of those people will be employed by the government. No. You study it so that you can invest it yourself. So after studying journalism, you can begin. Start from scratch. Start your own studio and there you will go far. So it doesn't mean that it is only in abroad where you can get employed. Even in Kenya, you can get employed when you become self-employed. Also, you, you think twice, as they have said, because there are many scams these days. You, you're being told to go and work abroad, but you don't know what you're going to do there. So ensure you inquire to know more before going there. Thank you. Wow, that, thank you so much. That is very important to our students, to our parents, who are uh, preparing learners to go through high school, and immediately after high school, most of them, some of them, want to even go abroad. Students today are asking so many questions about what am I supposed to know? Uh, what about US? What about Australia? What about where? I believe it's important that we get to learn this. I would also add that uh, what we are lacking is the platform. It's actually the, I mean, the mentorship. We are having exposure uh, platforms whereby learners can be a a helped to understand uh, where they can get what. That is the question. Because you can't just go abroad because so just people are calling them. You should have a reason. You have to ask yourself, why am I, why do I want to go to study in the US, for example? Uh, and how long am I going to stay there? Am I going to, to study there and live there, for example? So this is important. Um, if it's a question of money, it's, it's a challenge of money. Of course, some people have said now familiar who I'm Kenya. And maybe people feel, some people feel that Kenya is not, is not a country to rely on when it comes to finance because, because of, of the poor politics. I mean, I don't know, but that's the opinion of some people. The question we should ask ourselves is why are we going out? Why do, we, why do we want to go overseas and study? But my message is just like what our members have said, is that even in Kenya, there is a lot of hope, there is success. Actually, there is, if it is money you want, there is money everywhere. There is money overseas, there is money in Kenya, there is opportunity everywhere. But of course, it's important for you to even travel so that you can get exposure. Exposure is very important. Thank you, and we move now to the next part of our program. We are having the next question, and this is a question that is uh, touching on uh, math. And this question will be asked by one of our mentee students, who is transiting to university, that is Gerald. And the question will be answered by another student transiting to university for mercy. So, let's have the question. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, you know, after, after a lot of uh, research by this organization, CADOR, uh, we have come across that many students in, in, our, Kenyan, uh, uh, in our Kenyan schools, in high schools, uh, most probably, uh, they, are, they have, a, they have a, a problem in mathematics. And uh, uh, through the, the research by Kenya Center of Academician and Diverse Oriented Research, we found out that 80 to 85 uh, percent, that is a majority of the students, that they have a big problem in maths. And uh, 
Our, my question today is directed to Masi. Uh, it is why majority of the students fail in uh, maths. That is 80 to 85 percent to you, Masi. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Okay, to the, to the point of it, we know that most, okay, most students in most schools, they say that math, math is a challenge to them. But I do hope that because math is not a challenge, math is, that failure of mathematics is just a, an attitude that maybe students create within themselves. Because when we see mathematics, even in daily life, one can place whether to wake up or whether to learn. The time to wake up, that is just at calculations. And we see from it that math is always everywhere. Before you spend, you need to do a budget, isn't it? So before spending, you know, I need to spend this amount of money and this will be made. So when we take that to class, how can you say that math is really hard? That depends on the student. Be reliant as to you, my student. Please don't take math as something hard. Take it as something simple, related to real life, and maybe by being this, it may help you. Uh, apply the daily practices by doing those, I know it will really help you. I am, I am a wishes of that, or even I can say uh, it will really help you. Or even when you incur the program of Socratic, whereby you take most of the time, or maybe a time you're free, take time, ask questions, believe by asking, you get to know more. Ask your teachers, ask your fellow peers, students, and by doing that, I assure you that you learn that you see that math is really hard. Just practice it and incalculate by reading for some time or getting a content in mathematics for some time. Then after that, try to do a question for maybe like five minutes, try to do that question. And for the last minute, maybe you can ask your fellow friend to see if you have already gotten the, the content. And by doing that, I assure you that you will do it first. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, I, will, I will want to give this chance to one of our students who is in high school. Uh, tell us how, how we, what, what are you doing about math issues in Simone Gala? What is your class doing to really make sure that you are you perform well in math? Um, thank you. For now, we are performing well in math and because of the Kadon program in the school, which the children came and say, and uh, encourage our teachers to use it now. We have math hour 30, 30 minutes before they take the evening lesson. That's great day for us. Wow, that's great. I know when we discuss about math, we discuss about the evening. Math is an element in the room. There are so many uh, students in, uh, in many schools who are complaining that math is an issue. We have teachers also who are crying, saying our students have poor mental attitude towards mathematics. It's a society problem because we realize that even same parents are, uh, tell their learners that we were poor in math, we were not doing well in math. So if the parents can say we, we actually math is a challenge, your brothers and sisters say we did not do well in math, then who am I to do it? So I believe that uh, it's time for all of us to change our attitude towards mathematics by also mentoring someone and telling them that mathematics is possible, okay? Yes. That is great, and I want us to move to a, a different kind of question. And um, this is a question I want to direct to uh, Mr. Mark Lele, and uh, this is the question of, uh, we have our learners, Mark, we have our learners who are joining Form 1 very soon. And uh, actually, we are opening the year. We are this is actually a uh, 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 first term. We are in third term, moving to first term. And we have four months going to, to high school. And there are so many questions in their minds. There are so many questions in their minds. They are asking themselves, how is the high school? How is high school? Most of them don't know where to begin. I don't know, what message do you have for them? And maybe what are these questions that exist in their minds right now? Yes. So thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, welcome again, viewers. Now, um, like any other strat transitional form in our lives, so obviously, for months are transitioning from primary level to secondary level. So obviously, there are so many questions that comes into their minds. First, there is a fight 
of water. I'm sorry to use this water term. Inferiority versus superiority. So these students in most cases find themselves uh, moving to a certain stage where there are a lot of wonders. And by so doing, they ask themselves so many questions. First of all, uh, there is a special thing about the students. When they see themselves in a new uniform, special uniform, so and so forth, there is an inspiration, first of all. They like it. And then some even begin celebrating until they forget themselves. Uh, just because of uniform alone. And then there are terminologies in some uh, new subjects like physics, biology, what is chemistry. So they become surprised. But uh, we find a good number of them, by the end of the day, performing nicely. Always when they go with a certain spirit, which was in, uh, initiated all the way from behind there, a good number of former students does very well. But there is a trend where, after going to Form 2, that spirit, uh, spirit seems to die now, and they begin even to drop academically. Uh, so we need to challenge our teachers also here. So they have to do something extra to enable them to uphold the spirit. Likewise, when they go to Form 3, a good number of them also goes on dropping, and so on up to Form 4. But we need to change the tradition. We need to do something about it. I, another thing I need to embrace and encourage our teachers is to empower the orientation of our learners. Let our learners have a session where uh, some mentors, some motivators, and some teachers also who are experienced can talk to them. So they will break those boundaries and welcome those children so that this good number of questions they have will have to be answered and see education from the positive point of it. Otherwise, uh, our chair, that is. Yeah, thank you so much. Point. I also feel that uh, uh, Janet is having something to say on the same. Yes, yes, <laughs> okay, thank you once again for the chance you've given me. So, um, what I can say is uh, most of the time when the, there's this transition of uh, the new students from the primary to the secondary level, they have so much expectations in their minds. Most of them have so much questions that they are asking. So what I would recommend to us, to the, to the schools or to the teachers is, uh, they do like um, the reception. When for months are being taken in, uh, they should be received with the, 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 in an effective way, a welcoming way, whereby they shouldn't be scared when they get into the compound because what, what they have in their minds, back in their minds, is what am I supposed to go and, and expect? And every other time, they say um, the, the first impression is always very important. So when they get to the school compound, from the gate or the entrance, the watchmen, the way they are, they are receiving the parents and the students, and also as they are being taken through to the, to the administration offices, the introduction are there, as, as they are being done by, by maybe the other students or the other teachers, it should be welcoming, not to scare them. Because already they have fears, others are anxious, what am I going to expect? Uh, the other day, some were asking, do this thing of monolization still exist? Sorry to use the word, but they are asking if they are going to be mistreated. Do, what should they be expecting? Are they going to, to have that uh, good reception and such like? So I would say teachers, students, and together with the subordinate staff, they should work on how they will handle these new students so that they are not scared. They will come in part of it, and also the mentorship. Like the mentorship we have in Kador. Most of the time when we are doing the tradition, tra transitioning, the students are being uh, introduced to how they are supposed to go and uh, be, to, to behave in school and also the difference of where they were and where they are going and the expectations. So through the CADOR program, they are being prepared so that when they go to the school, they are no longer scared, but they are ready to face the new world. Thank you very much. Okay, maybe to add something mm -hmm. about those four months. Uh, my advice to a form one, you are joining form one, I want you to get this that uh, to whichever school you have, you have been called upon or you want to join, I want to tell you that it is not about the school, it is about you yourself. If you believe that you are in that school and do all the right, you know some, some of the students may say, I was not 
I was not given the right school of my best school which I wanted. Uh, I can just say to you, the school is you yourself, not the structures in that school. Just go there, love your that school, whichever school, love the uniform, and deny your benefit. I assure you that all shall be well. Now, uh, thank you so much for that. Now that you are touching on something very important, and we have a question which we wanted to address on uh, which is the most appropriate school for me. I, I, I've learned that uh, most, of, uh, most of our parents are running up and down right now, um, looking for schools, and uh, there are particular schools in the minds of these parents. Uh, and if they don't get those schools, they will, they will have lost some kind of hope in them. That if my child does not go to this particular school, uh, uh, they, they don't have the belief or the faith that they are going to do well. I've seen parents really running up and down. I've seen learners really crying because they did not, I mean, um, get admission to the schools of their choice. Maybe because of performance, some of them really performed very well, but they did not get a chance to join the schools that they, that they wanted to join. What is our view as moderators of the door? What do you tell these parents and these learners who, in one way or another, they have not uh, had a chance to be admitted to the schools of their choice? Which is this appropriate school for me? That is the question. Yes? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I can say, um, as Marcy had already told us, uh, that, that your school doesn't define who you are. Um, it's like, uh, if, if, if I was to join Foreman right now, and I was called to, uh, to a school in Cheblengu, or I don't know, where, somewhere in Nandi. And um, my dream has always been to go to Alliance. Uh, I think that won't, that will not, uh, that will not take me aback for my dream, you see. Um, I want to tell you for months, uh, the, the new for months are doing, I want to tell you something that uh, God has a purpose for each and everyone. Each and every person in this world has a path. And uh, maybe you wanted to go to Alliance, but God said, if I take you to Alliance, you will not be able to get to your dream. But if I take you to Kamobo School or, uh, or any other school that you have been taken to, that there is the place where your, your path to your dream is. So, as a form one, where you have been chosen to go, I can, I can give you an encouragement that you can go there because you never know what, what that school may offer, you know. That school may, may make you the star who you are, you see. Um, it's you personally who is the school. It's, it's not all about the environment. It's like always that it's like always that we say this famous thing in church that we are not that that the church is not a building. We are the church personally. That's that's for me. Wow, that's great. That is really nice. I believe it's uh, you want to say something? Yes. Yeah, I just want to say something. Uh, when you talk about the school, I know I know you know some of us have our past now as our testimony. We can use our past now as our testimony and give this to our learners who are, who are now asking themselves the schools to take and also the parents who are taking schools to be an option like they are moving up and down looking for big schools for their learners. For example, someone said, why should I suffer in Swahili? And uh, for this case, you say life is a journey. And this vehicle that we use is education. And this education is found everywhere. I know we have different definition of a school. A school is, long time ago people say a school is where people are learning. But nowadays people have different definition of what a school is. They define them based on the, the buildings, the structures, and probably what the school has for their learners. But today I would say that um, uh, since now our life is a journey, and this people we are using is education, and this education is found everywhere, every school in Kenya. That means a national school, a district school, a 
how to school have what it takes to take the learners to university. That is what they decide. Because I know most of the learners at the phone call will decide to be to the university. Again, someone called Bill Hebel says that every major strategic step that he has done in life was inspired and encouraged by someone. So I know today we are learners who are planning to go to school. And uh, we are the people now, as Cador, as parents and as uh, professionals who are going to make our learners comfortable. We are now the people to inspire them, and encourage them, and uh, motivate them, so to say, so that they make right, rightful decisions while, while, while choosing schools. So what I would say um, is that um, we, we just don't fix our minds that when I go to this school, I go to university. I know great men and women in this country today who went to schools. See, someone said, I went to school. Another said, I've gone to school. I don't know the meanings, but uh, there's people say good book schools. Others say single schools. All those are the same in way. But uh, I would say that uh, if today we claim ourselves and say, uh, what are we doing for this education? And this education, I find, I will find it even in that school or this school. Then our, our ultimate goal is success, and it is shaped by the character that we pass over, that is, that one player for the personal level. So it's not uh, necessarily the school and what we ask. Thank you so much, uh, viewers. What we are saying, cut very in uh, categorically, we want just to mention that uh, we, we all decide on schools. Everyone wants to be in their best school of choice, and that is why you always choose the school that you want to join before you sit for the, I mean, before you sit for the exam. Or, um, surely, um, just in case, you say, just in case you find yourself in a school that you do not desire, that is not the end of life. That is what we mean. We are not saying that, uh, that there are schools that are better than others. Definitely they are. There are universities that are good, that are, that are wonderful. And every parent wish their child to go to that school. Well, um, it, it, is, it is important for us to, to, to understand that. But, 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 but viewer who is a learner and maybe a parent, I just want, us, want you to know that the school is not really dividing you or your success in the future. Because when you look at us, when you look at all these fundraisers from there to there, especially those who have finished high school, most of us are, you can never know which schools we want. I mean, you cannot tell. Some, of, some, some people were in the best schools. Some of us were in the worst, so-called worst schools. But we are here today. Some of us are, uh, are lecturers in the university. Some of us are, 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 are doctors. Well, we, we could even just very quickly understand which schools we want. Maybe let's begin from there. Which school were you? So that our parents can know and our teachers can know that it's not about the school. Let's, let's, let's see. I was in Tulo Girls. Tulo Girls, and she's here. Yes. Tulo Girls is a good school. Um, I was in Sunshine School. Just imagine, Sunshine High School. High school. That's great. Yeah, so I started with the Stephen Cositan Girls, and then I joined Hill School in Dorit. Uh, yeah, uh, two schools, okay. Hill School and uh, Hill School. Stephen Cositan. Hill School and Dorit. Right. That's great. Let's, let's hear from uh, our senior mentor. Yes. Uh, he has come, <laughs> I went to Lemoko when it was still a mixed school. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one. Ah, it's yeah. something good. Wow, that's great. And you are here? And I was a day scholar. You are a day scholar? For the past two years. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's great. Bless mercy. As for me, I was in the so called ASK to Logan State School. ASK to Logan, the school at the hill. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Myself, uh, I was in Samoy Boys High School. Samoy Boys, just down here. Ah, that's great, the, the school at the, in the hills. Yeah. We have, uh, of course, we have that one who is now in high school. Let's, which, which school? Signore Gap. Signore that's great. And myself, in a school called Yemit High School down there. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here, and I'm here. Well, the, the school is performing well today. Um, that's great. And we are the ones who made the school to, to really change. And, I want to move to something different now, and we are here to answer some of these questions, or almost the last question, and it's been an issue dealing with students and listening to students, it's been very interesting, meeting learners in various schools, 
listening to them, some of them even come to you as a mentor and they are crying and when you ask them their problem, you really get surprised. Some of them have even said their, their problem is their parents. This is a question which I would want to uh, say to ask or clarify this issue of parenting and we will have, you will nominate someone to ask, answer the question and I believe that is general. Thank you. Most of the students, as they normally cry, saying, my parents are my problem. Many students think that their parents are the reason why they are not performing very well in their studies. So we want to know how, how does a parent become a problem to a student and yet you are the one who wants these students to prosper later on. And how, how can we solve this? Maybe Gerald can tell us more. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I'm a person of, of practicals, and I, I, I wish I had a lot of stuff so that I can do here practical. You see, um, okay, first of all, our parents, we, we really love you so much, but there are some things some parents uh, do which are not, uh, which make the learner to to, to not perform very well or, or to just uh, be not uh, stable in school. Such things are uh, like there are some parents who discourage their, their children. They'll be like, uh, you, uh, like for, for an example, if I'm the parent to Stacy, I can say to Stacy, uh, you Stacy, you are, you, are, you are bringing me some these, and uh, I, th I think. You just read and you just become my watchman. You see, the moment I, 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 I tell Stacy that you're going to become a watchman, she's a child. She will take that into her head and she'll be like, I'm a watchman. You see? So parents, that child will never, will never believe in herself, will never believe that she, she can be anything. She will always believe that I, I was made to be a watchman. And um, the second thing is about comparison. In our homes, parents, you have a lot of kids in, in our African setup, as we always know. Uh, we, we may have four kids, five kids, up to 10 kids. Mr. Lele can attest to that. Um, but in every home, there's that bright child, there's that middle child, and there's that child who, who is not performing well. As a parent, you should not discriminate that, that child who is not performing well or who is, who is an average person. You see, uh, parents, the mistake that you do that most of the children only say that my parents are my problem is because you compare them with their siblings, you see? Like, if, if I am the parent, I have Davis, I have Mercy, I have this one, these are my children. Stacy is not performing well. Davis is a, is a top performer, and uh, Mas is, is an average performer. What parents always do, and this is this is this is something which is going on in African homes. They will always give praises to Davis because he's a top performer. You see, that makes this child who is not performing very well to feel that he, he, he or she is not she's not meant to be in this world. She feels that you are not giving him all the attention, all the, all the things you're giving to, to Davis because he's a top performer. You see that Davis is going to be that engineer. But let me tell you one thing. What goes wrong comes around. Sometimes in this world, you find that the best performer of the family always have that degree always have that masters, but he will never provide. But the one you used to, to talk about that he, she's not performing, she's what? Oh, she's a watchman. She's the person who will come and provide for you. She'll come and help you. That is something which is there. The comparison should, be, should come to an end as parents. Parents should treat your children all equal. That is a problem which we have in our Kenyan society or African or in the world. As, uh, as a globe, even the uh, the second thing is uh, the family background. We have the rich and the poor. Um, the poor, 
I, I don't like using that word, but I the hope you understand. You can say the humble. Yeah, the humble. Yeah, the humble. You see, some some parents who are who are, uh, who are coming from the humble background, they always tell their children, "Have you seen anyone in this in this place who has a degree?" No. So that child always says, "Even us in our family, there's no one who has ever had a degree. So who am I to?" To have a degree, you see, that would make that child to say that just going to high school is just I'll just finish high school, take a border border, and start a job. You see, that child will never go to uh, to to a, to a university because it is in the mental, uh, it is it is just in his mentality or her mentality that in our family we don't have to go to school because there's no one who has a degree, there's no one who has a master's. But I can, uh, another thing is from the is from the is from the rich guys. The one who's you have a lot in your in your compound, so you have cars, you have everything. But one thing that that you tell your children is that you just go and get a degree and just come home. You make that uh, child to be to be to just relax and uh, all those stuff. So um, I think that is one thing that uh, is is disturbing. Then there's one thing which I've observed, which I've really really observed. I've also, it, it, it is also, uh, it, it is also something that is, it, it, it is, um, I, can, I don't have that good word, but I can say the issue of, of some parents being, uh, being, uh, having vices, not virtues, or like, I can say, can I say, yeah, they are dysfunctional, the family is like, like the father is, uh, yeah. Um, I can say like the father is, uh, is, uh, he, he's an alcoholic. You see, he's an alcoholic. Father is an alcoholic. You see, if the father is an alcoholic, there are some problems which come in between. You see, um, the child, as he grows up, he knows that in our family we have a problem. You see, even when he goes to school. He cannot concentrate in his uh, academic work. You see, that will make the child not perform very well because he or she she, uh, she will be thinking, uh, "Is everything good at home? Has dad come and uh, and, and and beat mom, or uh, has dad? Uh, it is just he will be in in that state of confusion in school, so he cannot." study very well. He'll be just confused of, of what is happening at home and not focus on his or her studies. So what I will advise you as parents, kindly, as you continue bringing up your children, bring them in a setup where you encourage them, where you, where you make them believe, where you make them feel they are the doctors of the future. I like the CBC way. The CBC way, it's like the IGCC way. You become a doctor at a tender age. They discover your, your, your talent at a tender age. If you are a doctor, they'll start nurturing, nurturing the, the, the doctor in you. So when you'll be reaching your university level, you'll, be, you'll just become a doctor automatically. That is what we want in our African uh, setup. That is what we want in, in the world right now. And I'm so grateful that, that our president has, has come and uh, uh, he, he launched the CBC, and I'm so grateful. And one thing I want to tell the, the, the children and the students who have the same, same problem, who say, my parents are my problem. I want to tell one thing. If I can do a practical, you see, if I have all these things in my hand, sorry, if I have all these things in my hand, even that book, this will be too much. This is, uh, uh, I can say, let me do this practical. This is, my mom told me, I'll be a watchman. I, I, keep it, I, I keep it at heart. My dad told me I'm useless, I keep it at heart. My, uh, my uncle or my, my dad also told me that, that you're nothing, and also blah, 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 and everything. You'll be carrying all these things for nothing, you see? If you're a student and your parent is like that, you see that your parent is a problem. He's saying that you don't, you don't belong, you don't do one thing. Let me tell you one thing. God has a purpose for you. 
So what if you, if you hold these things, you cannot receive anything. You see, I cannot receive even if Janet give me, or if, even if Mr. Lele can give me anything. I cannot, as you see, I cannot. You see this, you see this pen with it will be falling. I'll be full of, of bitterness. I'll be full of. I'm not. I'm not happy. But if I believe that, yes, my mom told me that I'm a watchman, but I know myself. I'm not a watchman. My dad told me I'm useless, but you know I'm not useless. My dad told me that I cannot make it, and I, and I say I'll be able to make it in my life. So I want you to I want to tell you one thing. Release everything that your dad told you. What what you're being told is is it is nothing. You know yourself personally. You know who you are. I want to tell you that today, you maybe you're the best hairstylist, you're the best doctor, you're the best everything. But what your parents always tell you, that will make you that you are not going to somewhere. Today, I want to tell you, achana nezo mtuzote. Leave them alone. Today, if your dad tells you that you are a watchman, tell him that I'll be the IG of the, of the, of the Kenyan police. If your mom tells you that you'll be the mamamboga, tell him that I'll have the biggest manufacturer of fruits in Kenya. You see, believe in yourself. Believe in everything that comes in your heart. Don't take it from anything around. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's great, that's great. Uh, yeah. Jara is almost handing the whole panel to a uh, answering session. That's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's uh, powerful. And uh, I believe that the uh, um, learners who are at home are listening, and uh, also parents, uh, just something very important is that uh, most of our learners also are not very honest. Sometimes they, they, they just blame their parents for no reason. And sometimes we want to blame our parents because we failed as a student. Just because I'm not doing well, I want to, to, to take the blame to my parents. And, and surely realize that you are with your parents, I mean, on, on like 15% of the time. Most of the time our students are out. They are with teachers in school. They are with their, their friends. They, you have so much influence from the environment. And, and, and so if you really, as, as, as Jared has said, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Gerard, you said that uh, you, 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 you leave these things, I mean you, you, you give out or you throw them out, then that means you remain and you listen to other people. It's important to have mentors in life so that even if your parents are not good mentors, yeah. you can always have other people like Kedon for example. We are ready to really help you. I will welcome you in our next sessions. Uh, I encourage you to keep watching Steve's TV. And just to conclude on my part, I would just want to say that uh, keep listening, make use of your, of your ears. As we say, the ear that refuses to listen will accompany the head when the neck is chopped off. That is, I say it again, the, the ear that refuses to listen will accompany the head when the neck is chopped off. And that is very important for students. Always listen, make use of your ears. Secondly, I want you to remember that the success rules will never change. What we are telling you today, you may have been told somewhere, and you will still listen to them once more. Uh, we've said before, and we say again, that the sun that rose to our great great grandfathers is the sun that is rising today, and will be the same sun that will be rising to our great great grandchildren. That the sun that rose to our great great grandfathers is the same sun that is rising today and will be the same sun that will be rising even to our great great grandchildren just like 1 plus 3 is 4 in Kapsabit as we are Kapsabit today and it's the same in Nairobi and also the same in England and finally I would want to say that uh, I will use Latin to speak this because I want you to understand it clear that quidiquida chipidum ad modum recipientis recipitu okay you can repeat that for me <laughs> that is to say that whatever is received is received according to the mode of the receiver. Thank you so much and may God bless us all. Thank you, viewers. Thank you. Thank you, viewers. My name is Kian Wilfred, the regional consultant of the Kenya Centers of Academicians and a diverse oriented research. Today we are in Choma Resort. A Capsabet. Uh, we are having our first panel discussion in Capsabet. This is our 27th panel discussion. 
but it is the first one in Kapsabet and we are having it here and we want to thank this uh, the, the management of this hotel uh, for hosting us today we will keep ha having our programs here and we just want to welcome all of us parents who are around this place I want to welcome our schools that are around to participate in the future programs. We have just begun today and we'll be having so many programs to run here. Uh, this will be very interesting. As you can see, the environment is very cool, a very serene environment, very nice. We have many halls here and we believe this will be very, very interesting. We are also having the, 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 the litmus activities where we will, we will have the CBC programs run from this place and we'll invite all our learners and all our teachers and all our parents to participate. Uh, once again, I just want to ask our viewers who are watching us right now that anytime we are having programs here, breakfast meetings, uh, career workshops, academic uh, discussions, please welcome so that we can learn. We say no.